Good afternoon and thank you for being here today. Who can believe that after October 15 floods that devastated a large part of South Carolina that we would be back again just a year later cleaning up from the remnants of Hurricane Matthew. Our hearts go out to our neighbors who are still in need and we send out a special thanks to our linemen, electricians, and other employees at South Carolina Electric and Gas Company who after experiencing outages on our system numbering 290,000 of our customers, homes and businesses, worked nine consecutive days until the last customer's power was restored. We thank them so much. In addition to that, we wouldn't have been able to do this without leadership. We want to thank Governor Haley. She was our rock through all of this. Whether at EMD, directing activities there and communicating to our citizens with regards to our recovery efforts, she certainly cleared the way for a lot of our line trucks from off-system crews, either through the National Guard or the Highway Patrol. All it took was one phone call, and she and her staff were there for us through this entire process, and we can't thank her enough for that leadership. In addition to that, our single point of contact, Executive Director Duke Scott of the OSA Regulatory Staff, was embedded with the governor and was there anytime we needed anything, and his assistance was greatly appreciated through this whole process. And then much closer to home and very personal to me, Mr. Kevin Marsh, the chairman and chief executive officer of Scanna Corporation, who anytime we needed him was there 24 hours a day for us as we went through these recovery efforts and we, reported, we supported our troops and crews in the field to get people's lights back on. And with the power, lifts everyone's spirit, and we show just how resilient South Carolina can be. I'd now like to call on Mr. Marsh for a very special presentation. Thank you, Keller, and I'm glad to be here today to represent all the employees of Scanner Corporation, especially SCENG. October of 2015 and October of 2016 were two tough months for the state of South Carolina. We have great crews, great people in office that support those crews while they're in the field. We have our own storm team as well as the emergency management division. But you always wonder, are you prepared? You hate to go through a live event, but unfortunately we went through a live event just about a week ago. And we had to watch for a long time before the hurricane decided it was coming up the coast of South Carolina. Unlike the floods, it came and unleashed all their water in a very short period of time. The hurricane took its time coming up the shore, dropping tons of gallons of water on our state. But our teams responded well. It started first with the governor taking bold action to tell people they needed to evacuate. The first time we reversed lanes on I-26 and that went extremely well. I have relatives down in the Charleston area and I know they were grateful because they could move out to safety very easily and, and very quickly. And then there was the aftermath, having to watch the storm come through, knowing you would have customers out, but working through our team, the emergency management division, all those people in the field, just not from SCENG, but those neighboring utilities that came in to help us. You can't get through this stuff by yourself. You have to have somebody to work with you, and they were great. They came as far away from Oklahoma and Texas. So my hat's off to our teams and the work they did, especially to all those who supported us. We're committed to serving our communities. That's one of our values, and we committed to the governor. We wanted to help her with one South Carolina flood relief fund. So today, Governor, we're proud to present you with a check for $100,000 for the flood relief fund for 2015. That is absolutely fantastic. Thank you. And we know this is great. We also understand the governor has extended the flood relief in the aftermath of Hurricane Matthew. So I'm going to ask Mr. Kassam to come up here and make one small change to this. We're going to change it from 100000 to 200000 Oh, my goodness. Thank you very, very much. That's fantastic. That's going to be good. Well, thank you. That is overwhelming and needed and um, very timely. You know what I want to say is when you go back to October 2015, what we saw was a lot of water and we needed to get the water out of the way, but then the work wasn't done. It wasn't just about clearing the roads and making sure everybody's power was back on. It was about how do we help those that were most challenged, the elderly, the disabled, those who didn't have much to start with. How do we get them to rebuild and get back to what they needed to do? And so with my partnership with the Central Community Foundation and Joanne Turnquist, we have been able to come together and we started the 1SC 
relief fund, and that was intended to help everybody through the floods. I am proud to say that through the work of the foundation, our fund, as well as all the voluntary organizations, we have been able to put 1,500 families back in their homes. Two million dollars was raised up until um, up until hurricane hit, and then um, you know we're glad to say that 17 million dollars in in-kind services were given. Basically, what we're doing is none of this is going to administrative costs. This is all going straight to supplies. This is all going straight to needs, and it's going into those areas that you don't hear about. It's going into the Clarendons. It's going into all of our rural counties that people don't always go into to help. And so that's why this fund is so important. And I will tell you, just from the actions of a company like SCNG, who not only is a great corporate partner when you go through a storm because they help me get the state back up and running again, but to also understand the needs of the most challenged and always be there in a way that the state can be proud of, I just can't thank you enough. I appreciate that very much. Um, so what we have had to do is start now with hurricane um, situation. So we will continue the work that needs to be done. If you saw what I saw in Marion County and Nichols, um, what we're watching right now in Conway and those areas, um, and going to the shelters, these people lost everything they had. And what we have to do is remember that South Carolina is a state where neighbors help neighbors. South Carolina is a state where we have if we, if we were blessed not to have damage to our homes, we still know there's other people out there. And so throughout, throughout the entire year, we had groups coming in and rebuilding these homes for these people who are so thankful to have it. I do wanna give a flood update since we had you all here, just to let you know, um, right now in Nichols and Marion, we are providing 20 hour, 24 hour security and we'll continue to have 24 hour security along the Little PD as well. The Waccamaw River is what we're watching very closely right now. It will peak near Conway today, and it will be at an all-time record. This will be higher than even during October 2015's flood. Um, so we will continue to hold our breath on that one. Um, DNR and SLED have been fantastic in that they have boating patrols all over that area, and we're working with the Coast Guard in terms of the intercoastal waterway to make sure that we're manning those properly as well. The big tides and the PD River will create slow damage from the Waccamaw. So we're going to take, it's going to be a couple of weeks before we see all of this water start to go away. From a FEMA perspective, they are doing their assessments daily. We have had 20 requests for public assistance. 20 counties have requested public assistance. FEMA has already approved 13 counties. Um, we've had 20 counties request individual assistance. And FEMA has approved two so far. That's in Orangeburg as well as in Marion. Uh, the damage assessments will also be conducted this week in Calhoun, Chesterfield, Clarendon, Marlboro, and Richland. So as those continue to happen, you'll see us update you on who gets the individual assistance and if we add more to the public assistance in that process. Total outages, and these guys were rock stars along with our other utility companies. I mean, if you see a lineman, thank them because they left their own families, they left damage of their own, to go help you get back into your home. At peak, 861,706 outages. Today, 5,355. That is unbelievable to be able to do that in a week. And so we thank them very much for that. The largest outages that we're seeing right now, number one is Georgetown, two Williamsburg, three Florence, and four Colleton. Those are the counties that we're focused on. And a lot of that has to do with the flooding that we're starting to see in those areas as well. We now have 130 total road and bridge closures, but what I'm proud to say is that is um, down from 481, a 75% reduction in a week that those road and DOT crew members have been on the road doing the same thing, trying to get people back into the areas that they want to get back into. Um, the vast majority of the road closures that we have now are in the PD, and so again, we're waiting on the situation from Waccamon and what's going to happen there. DOT debris operations removal is underway and that's another thing is once you get the roads cleared and you get the lights on you want to get the memories out of the way and so we very much want to get the debris out of the way operations are underway in eight counties right now Darlington Dorchester Florence Georgetown Ori Marion Sumter and Williamsburg we're starting 
debris removal. We will expect to start tomorrow in Berkeley, Collison, Lee, and Orangeburg, and we'll be mobilizing in Dillon, Hampton, Jasper, Marlboro, and Clarendon. So you will see a lot of movement and fast movement from um, our DOT workers in making sure that we continue to remove debris to help the rest of the linemen get into where they need to go as well as to just get the debris out of the way. We're still holding at 25 dam breaches as of now, um, and the boiled water advisories are now down to nine systems, affecting 14,000 customers. The shelter report, we are down to five shelters with 166 occupants. That is down from 77 shelters with 6,733 occupants. So massive changes on that as well, which means we're making sure we get people put in safe places and taken care of as we go forward. Um, the general population shelters, we have one in Beaufort, one in Florence, one in Marion, and two in Ori, and of course the one that we have the most residents in uh, shelters in Marion County. And so with that, um, you know, this goes to show that a lot of teamwork came together. This was Team South Carolina. I always say this is Team South Carolina at their finest. And then another event happens. And then they just continue to amaze me and surprise me. But when you look at the donations of a company like SCG doing this, that's thinking past just getting the power on, but actually getting people back into safe homes. And when you look at what the neighbors are doing to help each other, whether they know them or not, it is one South Carolina. It's always been one South Carolina. And that's why we call it the One South Carolina Relief Fund. And we hope that everyone will go to www.1scfund.org and make sure that you find out how you can help. Because this is a time now where when you count your blessings, think there's other people who need some. And so we need to make sure we help them. But I want to now thank you and, and uh, bring up my partner, Joanne Turnquist, with the Central Community Carolinas Foundation. Thank you. I get the Central Carolina yeah. Community Foundation. On behalf of Central Carolina Community Foundation and our staff and board, and it is a mouthful, we are extremely pleased to be part of One South Carolina, Team One South Carolina. Two million dollars went through our offices prior to Hurricane Matthew, going to nonprofit organizations who were wielding hammers and putting together homes so people could go back, go back to the place that they called home. Since that time, since September, when we started getting the warnings about the flood and the hurricane that was coming to our shore, close to $700,000 has been donated, thanks in part to the generous contribution of SCENG and its companies and others. But we're getting $5 gifts and $10 gifts because people truly do care about what's going on. And the committee that has been appointed represents the entire state. We have 11 people who serve on the grants committee, so they live in the places that have been hard hit, and they can make the decisions based on their personal experience and their knowledge about what's going on. We also work very closely with the South Carolina Disaster Relief Team because they know where the monies are needed, and they know where the dollars need to be deployed. So as the governor said, $2 million has gone out, close to $17 million in kind from those volunteer operation or organizations. And the committee has already approved over $100,000 in emergency relief grants. $75,000 to go to Harvest Hope, who are bringing food, mobile food pantry trucks to all of those really tough areas that have been hit that don't have grocery stores to go buy a loaf of bread or pick up water. And we also have two smaller grants that have gone out, one in Bluffton and one in Beaufort, to help folks that need temporary housing. So again, with everyone's help and with everyone's generosity, much like we had with SCENG, and with the leadership of our governor, we will get people home. So again, we are very, very proud to be a part of it. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Joanne, and there will be forthcoming information on my executive order to remove October from the calendar, but we'll talk about that at another time, and with that, I'll open it up for any questions that you have for me or for anyone behind me. Governor, some people at home who aren't familiar with this think, oh, if there's damage, there's FEMA, there's insurance, so why is this so necessary? 
This is necessary because you need to understand FEMA is temporary assistance. You know, what they'll do is they're helping us with patrols, they're helping us with high water vehicles, they might be helping us with the temporary needs that we have. But the one thing you should know from the flood is, you know, if a lot of these people, if they had a trailer, you know, they'll give them some Clorox and they'll give them a tarp. Well, we all know that mold can't be fixed by that. You have to gut it. A lot of these homes need to be gutted, cleared, so that they're safe to move back in. So what we are appreciative of from FEMA is being granted the public assistance, which is debris removal and security during that time. That's what they've given. Individual assistance is done on a case-by-case -case basis, but FEMA doesn't make everybody whole. I don't know that we will be able to make everybody whole, but when you get our most vulnerable South Carolinians, the ones who really, you know, just kind of have lost everything, that's, that's when you feel it. I was in Sumter not too long ago, and um, the Mennonites were there, and they were rota rotating out people. And there was a 92-year-old woman who just wanted to get back into her home. And they were able to rebuild, renovate, get her home back in there, and she was just so happy because that's where her memories were. That's where she wanted to be. We were at another home, and it was a World War II veteran. And he literally lost everything he had, all his memorabilia, all of those things. So the smile we could give him was getting that back out so he could get back into his home again. And there's lots of stories like that where you look at those that are challenged or disabled or elderly that really don't know where to go or what to do. And this is our way of saying, we got you. We got your back. We're going to take care of you in the best way that we can. And to be able to have done that for 1,500 families prior to Matthew, We'll continue going until we take care of everybody that needs to get back in the home. Governor, any idea damage estimates, either in number of homes that were damaged or, or, or monetary value? So we're starting to get damage estimates per area on those that were just destroyed altogether, those that had major damages, and then those that had minor damages. But they're very estimated right now, and so that's why we haven't released those numbers. We want, um, while our South Carolina Emergency Management Division is going with the counties and doing our, their own assessments. FEMA is also doing the assessments so that we match up and see if we can help with that information. So I think that'll be forthcoming, probably more towards the end of the week. Uh, roughly, I would have, in your own experience and observation, are we worse than last year or? In my own experience and observation, I know that throwing out numbers is a very dangerous thing. Um, <laughs> so, because the numbers could go up and the numbers could go down. What I will tell you is there's damage out there. Um, but what I know is that we'll push through it and we'll take care of it. And whatever way we need to coordinate that, we'll make sure we do that. Any other questions? Governor, we now have our first reports of somebody who actually drowned at all. I think this is one example. That's only one, but it was somebody who had refused help. Is there something that you wish, obviously they refused help, they refused help. Do you wish the state could have done more for people like this? You know, those are the things I have to live with at night is, you know, when people don't leave and when you ask them to leave and you ask them because you see what's getting ready to happen and you know the damage that it's going to cause. But we can't make people leave. You know, that's their right to stay at home. But, you know, when you hear things like that where he drowned in his bed, I mean, you don't, you don't get over things like that. You're always thinking about what else could we have done. And so that's when you turn your things to, re to release like this. And you just say, okay, you know what, we weren't able to help him, but we can help a lot of other families through the process. And that's really where we have to keep our focus. In visiting these evacuees and shelters, is there any one thing you've been able to tell them to keep their spirits up, or kind of what is your message back to them? We're not going to leave you. We're not going to leave you. I mean, in Marion County and in Nichols, it's going through all that right now. Our focus, we have the National Guard there. I have FEMA planners helping them with reentry. We've still got boat rescues that we're doing. We have DHEC in there testing the stormwater damage and, and making sure that it's safe. We are helping the mayor and their very tiny team that they have have everything they want. We put temporary offices there so they can start working again. We are get, trying to get in there to fix the roads. It's hard because the water's still there, but it's come down about two feet. Um, so when we went to the shelters, what we said was, these are the things we're doing. This is gonna be a process but we're not going to leave you. And basically that's what we're going to do. You'll see us do a Team South Carolina Day probably in about two weeks where we go and take everything to them instead of them having to find us. So that'll be anything from DSS food stamps to FEMA 
if they have to sign up for that to making sure that they have um, go to the Salvation Army and get clothes if they need it to make sure that we have a good place for them to go. Insurance will be there to help with claims. I mean, all of my agencies will be there as well as a lot of voluntary agencies so that it's a one-stop shop for them in their area so that they can talk through all the questions that they have. Governor, what do you think is the lesson that we can all learn from this? I think that the good news out of all of this that every South Carolinian should take is they should be very proud of their state. I mean, whether it's the linemen, whether it's the DOT crews, whether it's all of the agencies that came together and showed total teamwork, I hope that's, that's a takeaway that they never forget because the people of South Carolina are special and when anyone's in need, they all jump and try and help. And so I will forever be grateful um, to all the people that worked around us in that process. The other takeaway is when we tell you to leave, there's a reason we're telling you to leave. And it's because we're hearing all those things. And as much as I try and get the reports out, you know, five deaths is too many. It's just too many. And so, you know, our goal is to try and make sure that we keep everyone safe. And during times like this, that's when you feel your most vulnerable. All right, well, I thank you all for coming. Please help us get the word out about um, the 1SC Fund. I am, again, thank you to Mr. Marsh and Mr. Kassam for being fantastic in terms of a $200,000 donation um, to the 1SC Fund Relief. They, that will put people back in their homes. And at the end of the day, that's the real, that's when we know we're done, is when we've gotten everybody back in their homes. So thank you all very much, appreciate it. God bless.